You gonna go? Yeah. Wait, I have a question. I've been recording for the last 12 seconds. Okay. Oh, hi. So I've been sent by National Geographic to tell you guys today about invasive species. Now I know what you're thinking. What is an invasive species? Well, truth be told, I don't know, but I will find out soon. I'll see you later. So I just Googled it, and an invasive species is any non-native species that causes harm or damage to an ecosystem when introduced. I have this diagram to show you more about this topic. All right, so I have this diagram here showing the ecosystem and food chain of the Everglades. Here, check this out. So as you see, we have sawgrass here. Insects would feed on the sawgrass, and then opossums would eat the insects. And then eventually they would be eaten by alligators, which were the top predators of the Everglades. But now it seems that there's an invasive species that is taking over for the past 10 years or so. We have sawgrass. Insects would eat the sawgrass, possums would eat the insects. But now Burmese pythons are also eating the possums. And the alligators are still eating the possums, but then they are also eaten by the Burmese python. So the Burmese python has become the new top predator of the Everglades. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you a few species that I have in my own house. And I'm going to tell you how these could potentially become invasive species as well. Alright, so right now we are ascending the staircase to find the crested gecko. Keep up. Alright, so according to books that I've read, it's located in here, so let's find out. Here, this is crested gecko shed skin, which is a good indicator that we're close. Reptiles shed their skin as they grow, so as they grow more and more, they shed off more skin. Now, unlike snakes, lizards do not shed their skin in one whole piece, they shed it off in little fragments. Snakes, on the other hand, shed their entire bodies all at once, including over the eyes. But lizards, they do it in tiny pieces. And crested geckos in particular actually eat their skin. It's a normal behavior that they have. So let's see if we can find this gecko. All right, so here we have the New Caledonian crested gecko. See if you can get a close-up. Now these guys are from New Caledonia, which is an island off the coast of Fiji and Australia. So they're very used to tropical climates. Watch out, your finger's gonna get in the camera again. New Caledonian crested geckos. They need a tropical climate. Now let's say I took this gecko right here and I released it outside in Georgia. Now let's say, what would happen? Do you think this lizard could survive? No. Probably not. You're not supposed to answer, Jeff. We I talked about this. So. Gonna ruin my program. Gosh. So, do you think this lizard would survive? Probably not, right? Because there's only one of them, and it's used to a tropical climate. We have a pretty humid climate here in Georgia, but not tropical like where these guys are from. So, what would it take to turn this lizard into an invasive species? Well, let's say we took this lizard, who needs a very tropical and humid climate, and released it in Florida, where a lot of invasive reptiles are, and a whole bunch of these lizards together. They could potentially become an invasive species. And such is the story with Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades. So this is what happened. As a reptile enthusiast, I know that Burmese pythons, like crested geckos, are very popular in the pet trade. So what happened was many people bought these Burmese pythons, and then what they'd do was they'd release them into the wild when they got too big to care for them. So what happened was over time, many people released these Burmese pythons into the wild, and they probably assumed Florida has the highest density of reptiles in America, so there's a bunch of snakes roaming around, so we can just release these snakes and they'd be fine. But they didn't factor in the effect that they would have on the environment. So what happened was these snakes, they thrived in the Everglades and they've actually taken over. They even eat alligators whole. And as you know, alligators were endangered a few years back, so this became a real problem. So now, if you're out in the Everglades and you catch an invasive species, like a Burmese python, you are legally not allowed to let it go. You have to give it to a reptile sanctuary or contact animal control, but you cannot let a Burmese python or any invasive species go in Florida because it's a risk to the environment. So if you ever find an invasive species in Florida, make sure that you contact animal control 
or get a hold of a reptile sanctuary. So it was fantastic looking at this little dragon. Now let's move on to some more species. All right, so now that we've seen the crested gecko, it's time to move on to a mammal, in particular, some rodents that I have in this house. Now rodents, they're not as common of invasive species, especially in the Everglades, but they can become invasive species, nonetheless. So uh, Jeff, let's go ahead. Uh, you go over there and let's do that uh, unnecessary transition, all right? All right, three, two, one. So, follow me and I'm going to show you some gerbils. Here we are, Jebbles, right there. This one's Margo, this one's Jackie. Now, Jebbles originate from desert areas of the Middle East and Africa. Now, since they're here, obviously they're not gonna adapt to the climate here. But could rodents in general become invasive species? Absolutely. You know, the first rats and mice that came over on Dutch ships that carried the plague, they were invasive species for a while. But now, rats and mice have kind of carved out their own niche. So yes, they have carved out their own niche in many ecosystems and environments. And they have an important role to play. And in particular, rodents, they feed many reptiles, especially snakes, in many ecosystems. So they are important, but nonetheless, they were invasive species at first. But now, they are not. Another invasive species that's very common, and you might hear about this, on the AP exam. Actually, you probably won't hear about this specific one, but you will hear about some other ones later on. This one is called the Argentine Black and White Tegu. I'll put a picture up on the screen right now. So, the Argentine Black and White Tegu, similar to the Burmese Python. You see, Argentine Black and White Tegus. Tegus are a large type of monitor lizard. Now, monitor lizards are the group of lizards like the Komodo dragon, which you've probably heard of, the Paranchi, which you might not have heard of, Savannah monitor, water monitor. They're very large carnivorous lizards. Now the tegu is very common in the pet trade, but once again, what happened was people didn't take into account how big these animals would get when they first bought them. And then when they got them, tegus can get about six feet long. So what happened was they just let them go into the wild, and then due to the climate of the Everglades and the abundance of insects and other meals for these tegus, they thrived. And now, they are also an invasive species, just like the Burmese python. So if you see a tegu, you cannot release it back into the wild. You have to call animal control or contact a reptile sanctuary, because they're an invasive species and they're tearing apart the ecosystem. But you don't want to kill the tegus because you want what's best for the ecosystem and for the animal as well. So contact a reptile sanctuary, and that's always the best thing to do. Yeah. Now that we've broken the ice, let's get into some AP exam stuff. So, we have a review question over here. What is an invasive species? A, any species. B, species that eats reptiles. C, non-native species that causes harm to the ecosystem. D, non-native reptiles, or E, this video is so cool, oh my god. The correct answer was not E, D, B, or A, it was C, a non-native species that causes harm to the ecosystem, as we discussed earlier. The next question we have here is what is an example of an invasive species? A, a Burmese python in the Everglades, B, a green anaconda in the Amazon, C, gerbils in Africa, or D, green anoles in Georgia, or E, tegus in Argentina. The correct answer is A, Burmese pythons in the Everglades. Green anacondas, they belong in the Amazon. Gerbils are native to Africa. Same with green anoles in Georgia and tegus in Argentina. The Burmese python originated from Burma and Indonesia and when it's in the Everglades, it is an invasive species, once again, causing harm to the ecosystem. Now that we've done some questions, let me go over some more invasive species. Check. Oh, hi. So, this is what's going on. I'm gonna tell you a few more invasive species that are common on the AP exam, which I've seen in Baron's books and other practice tests that I've done. So, the most popular ones are kudzu. Very popular, you should know that the Burmese python, which I've talked about a lot in this video, the cane toad, and the Asian carp. Now, I recommend that you go on Google and just familiarize yourself 
with more invasive species, but these are four very common ones that I've seen before in practice tests. And also, you should familiarize yourself with what invasive species do to the ecosystem. Like earlier when I was showing you with the diagram of the Burmese python taking over the ecosystem. Invasive species are very common in FRQ questions, so you should know that. Make sure you familiarize yourself with what invasive species do, as well as some invasive species, and that should help you on the exam. Yeah. So an act that you might want to be familiar with, although I haven't seen it on any practice tests or the Barron's book, is the National Invasive Species Act. Now what this act does is it regulates the invasive species entering into the United States via boats and other waterways. So just know that act. And also I wanted to say something just as a public service announcement. Whenever you're getting a pet, make sure that you do the proper research for the animal because you don't wanna end up releasing it into the environment, which is bad for the animal and for the environment as a whole. So always do your research and make sure you're committed before getting any pet, exotic or not, because the animal's care is very important and so is our ecosystem. And we have to protect this earth that we live in. So thank you. I hope you've learned something from this video. You now have a broad array of knowledge concerning invasive species. You have two case studies you can pull from, the Burmese python and the tegu, both in the Florida Everglades. And you have a bunch of invasive species that you can know, and you know how invasive species affect the environment. And now you know the National Invasive Species Act as well. So you've learned a lot, hopefully, and uh, thank you for watching. I'm gonna eat some pasta now.